The human in you doesn't want God. The part of you that wants God is God. The part of you that really wants that love is love itself. There is only love itself. So the more you connect to that love, the more you surrender to that love, and it can be bit by bit if you want. Surrendering your insistence, your attachment to your ideas about yourself, who you are as a person, as a spiritual being on a journey, and all that fluff. Why not become empty and surrender to God right now, knowing that that's already what you are and that that's what will remain when you let go of everything that's not true? What are we trying to look for in a partner? What are we trying to look for in relationship? Beyond the, or in addition to, or other than the sexual magnetism, which is simply physics, okay? It's metaphysics, it's energetic polarization. It's like magnets, you just can't, you can't avoid it. If there is, if there is some match between a plus and a minus, if there is a masculine and feminine polarity in the room, and if they're both accentuated enough in their own degree, in their own um, polarity, then there will be a magne magnetism to some degree. This is physics. This has got very little to do with the concept or agreement of a relationship or a partnership or a marriage, okay? You can be attracted to virtually anybody Magnet magnetically in the physics of it, just energetic polarities. That's just how it works, pluses and minuses, protons and electrons. It's a subatomic thing. It's a core structure of this illusion, plus and minus, plus and minus, plus and minus. It constantly works together, bounces off of each other, it, it orbits around each other, it produces work. Without that, there wouldn't be any kinetic production. In the illusion, there wouldn't be any movement or work. So it's a beautiful, natural, physics-based thing. There's nothing wrong with attraction. You can't help it. Literally, you can't help it. It's an energetic thing. It doesn't matter what you think. This is why there's so much cheating and there's so much uh, infidelity and all that stuff. It's because we're trying to fight gravity. We're trying to fight physics, which is fine. We can do that if we really have a good purpose for being in a monogamous relationship, then we can agree upon that. There are harmonious, beautiful, purposeful reasons to agree to be monogamous, but sexual energy itself cannot be suppressed by any agreement. It can be suppressed by the will of the adept, but ideally it's channeled in a way that seems suitable to your journey and that serves a purpose. But it shouldn't be suppressed and it can't be suppressed is my point. Can you suppress gravity? Can you suppress magnetism? No, similarly, you cannot suppress sexual magnetism or attraction. It's an energetic phenomena. It's beyond the physical level. That's where it originates. So that's one thing. I, I just wanted to kind of separate that for a second and deconflate that with the concept of a partnership. So, but what do we seek for in a loving, committed kind of relationship or partnership? And that is God's love. What we are seeking for is God's love. So the question is the same, regardless of whether we think of it in terms of why do I fear opening up to this other person or this relationship? Why do I go into fight or flight mode? Why do I get super anxious about it? Or why do I get super avoidant of it? Or sometimes both, even worse and more distracting and unpredictable, anxious and avoidant. This is referring to the attachment styles. Uh, it's a good book called Attached, I think, on this topic. I think it was called Attached. So why do I fear opening up to a relationship, trusting that? And or why do I fear opening up my sense of self to God's love, to kind of lose myself in a way, to give myself to this greater love, and therefore maybe sacrifice some of my personal wants and needs and desires and biases and belief system. In both situations, we feel vulnerable, no? There is a fear, or it can be, it doesn't have to be, but I'm saying in the scenario of the questioner, there must be, if there is a fear of love, then there is a fear of being vulnerable. There's a fear of losing something. 
What is that something? And this comes back again to the same principle, my friends. You are God, you are God in human garb. The God in you has become deluded, deceived by your sense of having a body, by your physical senses, and by the indoctrination of your society, and then the further extrapolation and compounding of your own thoughts and ideas and preferences and fears and so on. But at the heart of it, you are God in confused state. These teachings are all about becoming God in unconfused state. It's that simple. Either way, you are God. Either way, you are essentially enlightened, if you will. Although the term enlightenment refers to the process of unconfusing yourself. You can be God in confused state or God in unconfused state. One is samsara, delusion, suffering, and the other is liberation and clarity and so on. Love. So why does God, in confused state, a.k.a. the human identity, fear God in unconfused state? That's essentially the question. Because it wants it, it seeks it, otherwise you wouldn't have any interest in partnership with another human being, or you wouldn't have any interest in God or seeking awareness and enlightenment and so on. So clearly, God in confused state a.k.a. your human mental day-to-day -day awareness, for the most part, probably, depending on who you are. Why is God in confused state seeking God in unconfused state but fearing it? Well, it lies in, the answer lies in the confusion. In the confusion, you have mistakenly identified your true nature with something it is not. After doing that for long enough, believing that you are the physical sensations, believing that you are where everything that the eyes see connect inside of the brain, believing that you are maybe your physical heart or whatever it might be, believing that, really believing and feeling that that's the case, you feel vulnerable because there's duality. There is something other than yourself, seemingly, that could harm you, whether it's another person that you're opening up to and that abandons you, for instance, or betrays you, or abuses you, or whatever it might be, or that doesn't really like you, but they're just hanging out with you anyway. Whatever version it might be, why is there a fear for opening up? It's because we feel vulnerable, because we think we are something as opposed to everything else. And the same applies to God's love. We have become so invested. You know, once you believe in something, you invest all your energy into it, for years usually. I am this person. I am Bentinho Masaru. I am the guy with this or that. When you are so invested in that, and now someone proposes that you either proposes in the relational sense, or they propose, someone like me proposes that you can awaken to your godly nature and become unconfused. Why? And that there is nothing but love there, essentially. Why would you resist that? Why would you fear that? It's because of all this investment that is resisting the loss of all that investment in the person. And it's invested so much that it now believes it's worth playing out the story more than it is withdrawing the investment altogether, not knowing how the story is going to end, not being in control, and instead being free. Freedom seems scary to God in confused state. This is why I say, the human in you doesn't want God. The part of you that wants God is God. The part of you that really wants that love is love itself. There is only love itself. So the more you connect to that love, the more you surrender to that love, and it can be bit by bit if you want. Surrendering your insistence, your attachment to your ideas about yourself, who you are as a person, as a spiritual being on a journey, and all that fluff. Why not become empty and surrender to God right now, knowing that that's already what you are and that that's what will remain when you let go of everything that's not true? Or everything you think is true. That's very important. Because everything you already think that's not true, you can easily let go of. But that's not the issue for you. The resistance lies in believing things are true when they're not true. So you got to be willing more and more. And again, you can do this gradually. 
You can develop this divine courage naturally, gradually. You don't have to force it all at once if it doesn't come natural. Take your time if you wish, but the more time you take, the more you'll suffer. That's just a consequence. That's okay, but that's up to you. But when you do surrender, even whether it's bit by bit or all at once, if you do surrender, bit by bit, let's say, then you are reacquainting yourself. You are befriending. Once again, you are remembering what it's like to be God in unconfused state, to be yourself in unconfused state. And the more you realign to that, the more you reacquaint yourself with that, the more you remember two members, God and you, and you remember them. They reunify God and God. The more you do that, the more it will rub off on you, the more courageous you'll become because it will convince you experientially, not just conceptually, not because I'm saying it. You will see in your direct experience the irrefutable benefit of this. And you'll gain confidence in that. And you'll develop more and more of it. And then God wants more of God and wants more of God, wants more of God, wants more of God, until the personality seems just kind of like a silly apparition. And you just don't want to invest in it anymore. You thought it was so important because then it would get you to this love that now is already here. So yes, it takes some of the steam out of your engine of the egoic desires. And that takes some courage, and that takes some trusting. So the more trust you have in God as an actual reality, as your actual reality, the easier it will be to not fear love. But you fear love because you've invested for so many years in a mistaken identity. Now it's going to take some courage, time, and trust, and faith, and teaching to let go of that investment and trust that you're held by what you were seeking for by investing in the first place. But it's already here. 